What's the craziest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, I'm not a super adventurous eater, but I have eaten uh, fried maggots, and they were actually tits pretty good. They were good? What, like, what did they yeah. come in? Uh, they're just like crispy fried, and they taste like french fries. Hey, what's up web creators? It's Justin Jewell, back with another Creator Spotlight, and today I'm coming to you from a beautiful beach in Hawaii. And now here I am in New York City. And now here I am in a field of goats. Just kidding, I'm still at my home office in Oakland, California, working through the pandemic. But today's guest is coming to us from Oaxaca, Mexico, where he's traveling right now. His name is Nomadic Matt. He is an OG travel blogger who has had his blog nomadicmatt.com for over a decade. Um, he also runs a blogging school, he has a charity, he used to run a hostel, and he's just got a ton of other creative endeavors. So let's head to Mexico and see what Matt's up to and just pick his brain about the evolution of blogging and what it means to be a web creator today. Can you just give us a breakdown of like all your creative undertakings at this point? Yeah, so I have the blog, which is pneumaticmat.com, and that's the, the mothership of, of the empire. And then I have the blogging courses and the writing courses. And then we have a conference called TravelCon, which is a travel media event. So it's not just online creators, it's all media. Um, sort of like professional development. So if you think of it, it's sort of like the way doctors and lawyers and teachers go to conferences to learn and, you know, what's hot in their industry, same kind of concept. Uh, but that's on hiatus because of COVID. I had a hostel, which is also closed because of COVID. Um, and we have called what's the Nomadic Network. It's a um, sort of offshoot of our community where it's all it was in-person events in cities around the world. And then I have a charity called Flight, the Foundation for Learning and Youth Travel Education. And that raises money to send uh, high school kids on study abroad trips. Uh, all from underserved communities. So any community that sort of just, we're all like 100% of the kids are in school one. So like what made you decide to be a travel blogger from the get-go? So I started the website as an online resume to try to get freelance writing gigs. Maybe like guidebook, you know, like, I mean, very naive. Like, oh, if I just started a website, people will hire me to write. And so I, you know, I pitched a lot of freelance writing. I did like, you know, cheap white, web ads, uh, websites, you know, 50 bucks here, 100 bucks there. But when you're a backpacker, that goes a long way. While building up this blog, and one sort of like my mentor um, in that like really terrible internet marketing space was like, you know, Matt, why are you wasting all your time with, time with this? You have an actual travel website and actual expertise. You should just focus on that full time. And so I did, uh, <clears throat> and it just kind of took off. You know, I was very early into the space. I brought a lot of, you know, that SEO knowledge into Nomadic Matt. And so I was ranking really high on search, doing legit stuff. You know, I got a bunch of media mentions. Uh, I got a hit in the New York Times uh, in 2010, and that sort of just launched everything. And one day I just kind of woke up and I was like, I guess I'm a travel writer. How, how much of the SEO stuff do you use like today? Search is about pre-COVID at least. Um, Two thirds of our traffic, uh, so a considerable amount of time and effort goes into ensuring we rank high. That we're always going out and you know, doing. I, I do every interview under the sun, you know, because you get those link backs. Um, always updating content. Always looking at you know how can we optimize this page. What is Google ranking our competitors for, and maybe try to understand why. Uh, so just a constant constant effort to keep our rankings. I mean, you know, we have a lot of brand equity since I've been around for 12 years and c clearly have like one of the largest, you know, independent travel brands out there. So I, you know, you'd have to ask your search folks that this, but I, my belief is that uh, the domain authority is pretty high. And so, you know, your bot kind of looks at that and goes, well, you know, nomadic math is considered a high value, high trusted authority on the subject. So that gives us the ability to compete pretty well in Google. I've identified about 150 pages on my website I want to 
constantly have ranked pretty highly. And so, you know, we just sort of cycle through that. And we're constantly looking at, like, you know, okay, like, we really want to, where do we stand for best travel insurance? Oh, we've really fallen off. Like, okay, like, what's changed and what can we do better? You mentioned your blogging school. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a course called Superstar Blogging. Now I changed it to, like, Superstar Blogging Masterclass. And we have one for writing, too. I used to have one for photography and video that I, like, co partnered with but we're sort of bringing it down the plan this year was to do sort of a a big mastermind uh, for more high end uh, but covid ruined all that those plans so now we still keep our uh it's a monthly subscription course uh so you can buy monthly quarterly or yearly and i basically just am your teacher i edit your work uh we have weekly calls uh you have tech support we have a community um forum and just like a collaboration board so other students can meet other students you know nobody really gets on this thing by themselves yeah the gist of it is just to share whatever i've i've learned over 12 years so people don't end up making the same mistakes i did um as well as sort of just think strategically especially today during these very cluttered times where there's a million platforms and um a seemingly endless amount of content bloggers. Why do you still maintain a website when you have all these other platforms? Like, what is the importance of that to you? Algorithms change. I mean, even your search algorithm changes. Uh, but having a place where that's my space on the internet, not my space, my space. Um, it's, you know, something that can't be taken away. Uh, and, you know, allows me to build the email list. Uh, and also allows me to, you know, you know, once people know the brand, a lot of people just be like, I don't know, go to Nomadic Man and see what he's saying about it, right? So um, rather than constantly having to find people through search or constantly just having to like play this social media algorithm game where you just have to keep saying, you know, always changing and it's always a losing battle, right? You know, you, Facebook's like, we have pages. Go spend a hundred thousand dollars in ads and build up your pages and you know all that stuff. Haha, ha, actually we only care about groups now. So, you know, versus like out Instagram's like, hey, we're doing reels now. We're now TikTok. Um, and then you build up Snapchat and then Snapchat's not a thing. And so like it's a lot of work to keep that hustle about. Um, it's just easier to have your own own place to call home online, especially because Travel is a research-heavy thing, right? You don't make a $3,000 purchase decision because Instagram has a shop now item. You have to get time off from work. You have to plan it out. You're doing a lot of research. You're buying guidebooks. You're not just jumping and going to Paris. And so that's still a very text-heavy reading uh, way to research. And so a blog is the best medium for that. We did a little blast for questions on our Instagram stories yesterday, and somebody asked, does travel writing as a job ever take away from the pleasure of traveling? Uh, yes, yes it does. Um, when I was traveling for funsies, I wasn't taking pictures of menus um, and walking to grocery stores to write down prices for vegetables. Um, <clears throat> but there's different kinds of travel writing, and I do a lot of what is called service journalism, where it's very much like, how like how much do things cost? So I have to be a little bit more attuned to prices, especially because I work at the budget side of things where people are price sensitive. Um, but like any job, it's really important to take time off. So there are many times where I'll just go somewhere, shut the computer, and just enjoy a place for what it is, and never really write about it. Um, and you know, keep those vacations to yourself. You know, so. It's a, you, you learn how to balance it. There's definitely a, a need among modern day travel content creators. And I, I don't, I say content creators versus writers um, intentionally because the online content machine, machine um, always feels like you have to feed that beast where there's always this pressure to create content, 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 content. Whereas if you're a more traditional writer, you're working for a magazine 
you know, you're going somewhere on assignment and when you're off assignment, you're not working. Um, and so I think if you're a content creator, you always feel that pressure to like blog or Instagram about everywhere you've ever been and eaten. Um, I no longer feel that pressure anymore because I, I don't care. Um, and I know that it's important to take time off. So yeah, you know, I have, you, you just said like, am I going to write about this place? Nope. Okay. Then I'm just going to just have some fun. Thanks, Matt. We'll do our best. Okay, web creators, that's a wrap. Stay tuned to Creator Spotlight for more conversations with creators doing awesome stuff on the web. Until then, this is Justin Jewell fading into a hedge like Homer Simpson.